I'm Stephen Soil. We're here at Blackfish Gallery in Portland, Oregon on Mother's Day 2014. And um, this is a show of my kinetic work. I have six kinetic pieces. Um, and this particular piece was a piece that had been in storage for many years, about 40 years. A piece I did while I was in art school in the uh, bachelor's program. Um, and I found this piece and thought it would be really nice to show it. Uh, it was, it has a motor, it was meant to be kinetic, uh, but I haven't really tried to make it run um, at this point for this show. But it has some very nicely uh, shaped plexiglass uh, shapes that are screwed to uh, brass strips which are soldered together. Uh, and also there's some tubing, rods and tubing, so the pieces could move around and take different configurations. This is a piece, a kinetic piece, that is made exclusively out of brass. Brass sheet that has been uh, bent and soldered to tubing that then will slide along the brass rock. And the motors for the piece are on the other side of the wall and the timers. And. Uh, it so happens the way I've set the timers that this side here does most of the, of the movement. Um, I prefer it that way for this particular installation. And then there'll be times too when neither side is going. Uh, and I enjoy the configuration that the sculpture takes. That these forms would slide and swivel that they take. <laughs> and so, the piece now is stationary. Both motors behind the wall have turned off for a period of a minute or so. And then they'll start again. This is a watercolor of mine, which was done on location in the Willamette Valley. And I've always done watercolors, and I've always drawn and painted from nature, close-ups of plants or, or scenes. And I think it gives me a nice balance with these uh, kinetic sculptures that I make that require a lot of careful machine, machining type work. So I do enjoy being out in nature uh, with the, the sights and the smells and the wind blowing in your face a little bit. And particularly there are lovely places in the Willamette Valley, uh, some farmland. Um, and I've always loved the watercolors of Cezanne for their delicacy and their kind of multi-layered quality. They always seem to have uh, a kinetic aspect to them. And also another favorite watercolors of mine 
is John Sell Cotman, English watercolors of about 200 years ago. And one thing he started doing was just defining in his drawing certain shapes with a pencil. He did careful uh, renderings of landscape and even some of the buildings, some of the ruins in England, in uh, northern England. And uh, then a flat, just a one-time flat application of the color. And so I've, I've kind of influenced by that and doing that at times. Um, in this particular painting, this spot, I was really thrilled. Uh, there's a bridge called the Gilkey Covered Bridge for the road. It crosses a creek, which is called Thomas Creek. And you do see a bit of it there, but it kind of comes down and around like this. And beside the Gilkey Covered Bridge was a railroad line and a trestle over the water. And I perched myself up on that trestle and had this really nice view of fields, bits of forest, hills in the background going back, and then kind of a spring-type sky, a sky that, you know, things going on, rain coming and going, that sort of thing. So this is a piece made of brass, uh, tubing, rod. Uh, the motor, of course, is on the other side of the wall. And uh, I've made some nice shapes with the flat brass and then bent them. And I've also used a little spray paint for, the, for color, because I really like this red and I like the blues. Um, and this piece was rather inventive in the sense that there are two. Obviously, here's the front part and the back, back part with the red. Um, they have a separate, their tubing is separated and each one rotates on the quarter inch rod. And there is a little bar that is soldered to the rear tubing that then catches on the front piece and is swiveled around. It catches for a while and then gets to a certain point and can flip over on its own because of its own gravity affecting it. And then, of course, it's on a timer, so it runs part of the time and is off part of the time, so that the viewer can enjoy the position that the various forms take. Here's another piece uh, of brass that has now three rods, one, two, three, that uh, the brass forms slide back and forth and swivel on. So it's a little more active piece than the previous one. And there are two uh, little bars soldered on here, one here, one here, that catch and cause the motion of the second and the third rod here. The motor, you see, just drives this piece here. Uh, and then here and here is tubing that is free to swivel, except for these little stops that are soldered on there. 
So the idea is quite a bit of activity, quite a, quite a few forms moving back and forth and rotating. Um, and then also taking some interesting positions when it's stationary. So here is uh, a, a fairly new piece where I had this plexiglass volume constructed uh, with oil in it. And this is two cycle engine oil and the little uh, dams you might say that are within the plexiglass hold the oil and make shapes. And then of course the rod is being turned. There's a little stepper motor with, with a gear behind here. Uh, and I've kind of said that this is in a sense the wall. And I'm showing what's in front of the wall and what's behind the wall. So the viewer can see that. And this is programmed, so it doesn't run steadily. It kind of runs in little jerks as the stepper motor receives its impulses from what's actually a microcontroller here. And besides that, I have a, a little sensor, an infrared sensor here that turns the whole thing on and it will go through its cycle and then if there's no movement and nobody's in front of this or out in the room moving around then it's stationary. fluid with a little bit of the blue uh, to mute it a little bit and also I think some uh, mineral oil to lighten it. It's kind of neat the way as it flows from one volume to the next most of the oil tends to stay on this uh, against the sides of the plexiglass because of its own surface tension and makes this kind of film, this thin film, this veil-like pouring, uh, which I particularly like. And um, so this was a more complex uh, composition with the plexiglass strips, the little dams. Particularly nice, this uh, triangular volume that holds the oil. Um, now this has its stepper motor and its microcontroller on the other side of the wall and as I remember it's programmed to move at three different speeds. Plexiglass 
volume. And the tubing, it does attach very firmly to the shaft, um, which did take some doing with the threaded portion and the, uh, the O-ring seal. And so we have a nice warm red that is a little bit of transmission fluid and a lot of regular motor oil uh, to get this kind of uh, vermilion color. Now there's a pin here which stops the gears. And I'm going to pull this pin out and then the piece will rotate very gradually. Uh, we continue for an hour or more and as it did that, the spring would gradually lengthen and unwind. So I'm going to pull the pin and then we'll just let the camera run and you'll see this slow motion but then all of a sudden when this oil reaches the top of this little dam, there'll be quite a bit of activity in the oil. So here we go.